Hello everyone and welcome to Neutral Game, your newbie-friendly fighting game podcast. I am one of your regular hosts, Six Detmar, but uh, Miodrag is not here this month. Uh, Miodrag is off on vacation, well-earned, after shipping a, a fucking video game, um, which is hard to do. Uh, so instead, I have two very special guests with me. Not very special in the after-school sense, just, just people I like a lot. Uh, I didn't think of an order in which you, you two <laughs> should introduce yourselves, um, but you know you're on you're on one microphone over there, so you two can like look at each other and you know eye contact and figure it out. So go for it. Uh, I'm Kat. I'm a game design student at NYU, and I'm also a photographer. And I'm a I'm a gamer. And my partner is Ty. Yeah, I'm Ty. Um, Ball and Teshuva on Twitter. Hi on the internet sometimes. Um, I'm a poet, which means no one knows who I am. Yeah, I think that's good enough. All right. Well, and we're here to talk about the latest and greatest in the world of fighting games. Them's Fighting Herds by Main Six. Have you? No. <laughs> oh, no. No. I was lied to. Uh, <laughs> no, we're here to talk about Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Uh the the fourth or fifth or four point five ed- edition you know, let's go with fifth. fifth. I'll i I'll give them its sequel status, right? Yeah. Um, but the latest Super Smash Brothers game. Um, now, just to start off, because uh, this is a fighting game podcast, and I think all, uh, the the neutral game stance is well established, but it's possible some people just listen to random episodes. So, Smash Brothers is a fighting game, and stop being a stupid pain in the ass about it. Okay, okay, mm-hmm. sounds good. Um, now that said, um, what is what is the general history here in this group with the Smash Brothers series? Um, I've been there since the beginning, since then sixty four one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I played I played sixty four a lot. Um, I did not actually own a GameCube or any uh, subsequent Nintendo consoles um, until the Switch, really, or I guess like the three DS for the tail end of uh, Smash on that. So I kind of got back into the game um, when I got together with Cap a few years ago. Um, so yeah, kind of a weird boomerang thing going on there. Friends. I've always been here. I've been here. <laughs> For me, I uh, I played a bunch of Smash 64, and then when uh, when Melee came out, I did not have a GameCube, but my at-the-time best friend did, and we basically worked out a thing where I was, uh, I was a bum, um... And we basically established a thing where it was like, hey, you have Smash, we're going to play 1v1, no items, Smash. Um, and because we were pros, we did Temple. We thought that was the competitive stage, you know? Hell yeah. Uh, and we were like, uh, and I was like, if you win, you have to give me a fruit roll-up. And we just did that like two or three times a week. <laughs> Damn. And on our own, we discovered tier lists because by the end we were like, if you don't pick Fox, Sheik, or Marth, you're an idiot. <laughs> fools six is a, a smash shark over here confessions i mean you know it was all it was all like this was this was back when the game was new like we never really got into like you know we never figured out wave dashing we never looked up anything it was all just between the two of us you know trying to one-up each other we never did any outside research yeah um so it did come as a surprise to me when i finally came to see professional melee and was like oh i thought i was good um no <laughs> and i'm not no um but yeah with melee they really they really hooked me and then um and then brawl came out and i guess i'm curious i feel like brawl is a big divide for fans of this series um brawl is fine i don't know why it got so much hate but it's not my favorite i don't really think it's bad i don't know that's it's- pretty much all my opinion on it it's my understanding that that was the, uh, the version where Meta Knight was like S plus tier. Is that correct? He was he was insane in that game. But I mean, really, for for me as a person who was you know relatively serious about Smash, the thing that made me like I liked a lot of the ideas in Brawl, um, but the inclusion of tripping was a mechanic that just destroyed the game for me, basically. Yeah, so my all I have to say about this, because this as I said, this isn't a game that I played at all, is this is 
Brawl is responsible for Meta Knight mains, like, getting shit um, from, like, people in the casual player base, like, a decade after, like, the game. Mm-hmm. Like, people like, such as myself who never played that version of the game, it's so like, oh, Meta Knight, so you're, like, a tryhard, like, you know, tierless conscious person. It's like, wait, what? He is one of the most overpowered characters to ever be in a competitively played fighting game. Um, like, like, uh, on par with back when Akuma was only an unlockable character in one of the editions of Street Fighter 2. Sure. He was that broken. Um, but yeah, for me, it was like, so for, for those who aren't familiar with the mechanics of tripping, um, in Brawl, there was a mechanic where just there was a random chance when you were dashing that you would trip and fall down. Yeah. Um, it, it was like being stunned. And it also, the odds of it happening went up the better you were doing. It was like a system level blue shell. Hmm. Um, and yeah, as a person who tried to play competitively, that was, I mean, not like truly competitively, but who tried to, who tried to play for, who was, who was real serious. Um, it was insanely aggravating to be like, oh, okay, since I have the lead, I am proportionally more likely to just randomly face plant and get killed. That's one of those things that I feel like needs to be optional Mm -hmm. just because it's so changes the flow of everything about it. I mean, I feel like totally. I feel like fighting games have, you know, over the course of like a couple of decades, like really dialed in like a couple of, I guess we can generally call them like rubber banding mechanics, right? Yeah. Like things mm-hmm. like how meter generated in, you know, certain games or to some extent the rage mechanic in Smash, although obviously it doesn't like affect all characters equally, blah, blah, blah. Um, but still, right? So like those things are fairly effective. Um, and what mm-hmm. you described sounds horrible. Absolutely horrible. And also the, I mean, Smash has the, like, and other, some other fighting games do, like, the, the stale moves mechanic, right? Yeah. Um, I think these are all, like, good, like, quiet systems for, for forcing people to, like, to, to be able to come back when they're, when their backs are up against the wall, and also to sort of give little handicaps to players who are clearly way stronger. Um, but yeah, that was just a clumsy solution to the problem, and, and for my money, I mean, that was a game that I would play sometimes, but, like... I didn't even bother buying it until well after its prime, just because I was like, no, this isn't this isn't the smash I want. Um, I bought it only because I was more casually into it, and I didn't even notice the tripping mechanic. Because, hmm. you, you know. Uh, are you one of those items filthy casuals? It's uh, okay, this is a safe space, despite my use of the word filthy. No. I mean... It's okay. Some people just I, don't, I don't like showers. items okay. now, but maybe I did back then. I feel like it's been so long. Yeah. Who knows? I'm I'm mostly just teasing. I mean, like I think items are I my current stance on items is they're nice for like matches that you're taking a little less seriously. It's nice to let off some steam now and then. And I kind of wish more fighting games had stuff like them, yeah. honestly. Where there's like, hey, like we've had our we've had our try hard like grudge matches. Let's just let's just have a good time. Yeah, I, I I, mean, that's always been my relationship with Smash. Like, I used to make up stories about characters when I would, like, pause the game and just, like, play with the camera mode and stuff. I was never... I, I never took it seriously until I was, like, way older, like, over 21. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I always just... It was just mostly for fun for me. So I guess I'm mostly in the the casual camp of Smash until much later, like af- like way after Brawl was released. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's, I mean, again, not that I think it really matters, but I'm a bit hesitant to, like, ascribe, like, you know, a position on items, like, to the, like, casual competitive um, dichotomy um, for a number of reasons. But I don't think that, because, like, I've always been a casual player of Smash, right? It was only towards, like, the mm-hmm. tail end of 4, and now that... I'm really enjoying playing, not every day even, but like certainly like every other day for hours, you know, and really trying to dial in some stuff. So I, you know, pretty much a casual player. Um, I despise the random element that items introduce um, and across like other games too, like those types of mechanics um, to Mm -hmm. me aren't like fun. Um, So I do think there's like, I don't know, like I'm I'm not sure that... um, like just increased RNG is something that um, necessarily like makes sense to just be like, Oh, well, you know, it's a casual thing. Um, Whatever. It's, it's sort of a minor Mm -hmm. point, but. 
And people may not realize it, but there is already a decent amount of RNG just in the base game, Smash Brothers. Yep. Like, attacks attacks have, like, RNG based on, like, you know, like, on some knockback, there's some percentage RNG. There's, like, you know, stale moves and stuff can be implemented differently. There are a lot of factors that actually do, and rather than, you know, people will just be like, oh, there's there's game, Mr. Game & Watch's hammer, but there's actually a lot in there. Yeah. Um sort of subtly keeping things from being too predictable because that is a real concern of of being able to re just reduce the game to numbers but i don't think you necessarily need items to avoid well, that outcome it's because either. it's because items is a visual like random mechanic the other mechanics are hidden by the mm -hmm. game itself they can't people can't visually like see them and not a lot of people are going to be counting their like hp values off by one or two like some people sure. are but you know like me me Playing Brawl back then isn't. I'm just like, I don't know, a freshman in college or something. Yeah. Who cares? I think it's a question of scale, right? Like, I don't know why, but, um, like, an Age of Empires type game just kind of popped into my head. And, like, the other types of, like, Smash RNG that we're talking about are the difference, you know, when your Longbowman either does, like, 9 or 11 damage, which ultimately might make the difference, like, a single unit surviving with a silver HP of dying. That's, like, the other elements of RNG compared to the mm -hmm. RNG of items, which is, like, oh, random event happens, so um, an allied NPC army of 40 cataphracts just, like, storms in, completely levels your enemy's base, um, apropos mm -hmm. of nothing, right? Um, to me, it's, like, that's the scale that items operate under, you know? Um, and I think it's reasonable to look at them differently than, like, the, yeah, the really, like, um, I don't want to say minimal, but... Um, yeah, like really subtle um, random effects that are in the game otherwise. Yeah, and there are ones that are less subtle, but the yeah. odds on them are, are proportionally less, like, like rarer. Like, I mean, you know, there's the, there's the, the first time I was playing Melee, and I just had a, I had a, we had, we, me and my friend who were 1v1ing all the time had a kick of like trying to make other characters work, and so my friend was trying to make Peach work, and the first time he pulled the stitches and threw it at me. Um, for, for, again, for those who aren't aware, uh, Peach pulls turnips, that's her ability, and she can pull different turnips, and there are a few that, like, have different effects. She can pull up a bomb, and there are very long odds of her pulling one that has, like, a weird, like, zombie face mm -hmm. that just hits, like, a motherfucker. <laughs> um, and the first time that happened to me, like, we both just sort of, like, reeled around, like, what the fuck just happened? Um... So it's not like there is no, or, you know, there's like, you know, Game & Watch's hammer again. You get a number nine and they almost always just die. It is possible to survive a number nine, but it probably isn't going to happen. Um, you know, there is still significant RNG in the game. It's just, uh, it's just a little more controlled as opposed to items where RNG becomes, like, it becomes like Mario Kart or Mario Party, right? Where RNG becomes the game. It starts to consume the actual gameplay. So it seems like going by the timelines and what you what you two have said that uh, Smash Four was around the point where you two started to get a little more heavily into the the game. Yeah, I would say I would say that definitely for me. I I was I was into it during Melee, but I just really didn't take games that seriously at that point in my life because the points in my life when I did take games seriously are like now when I'm trying to do academic stuff about games and like when I was eight. <laughs> and also now that you're a gamer. I mean like before you weren't like a gamer but now you're a gamer and games are serious. Did you know that games are art? Uh, that's another podcast. Cat <laughs> uh, is remembering that I'm a pain in the ass. <laughs> but uh yeah I mean I don't know. Do I really take Smash seriously now? No. I don't know. It's hard to say. Hmm. What what is taking something seriously even? That's a you know, that's a fair question. Um I guess to me the thing like like I signed up for a Smash at Evo, does that count? Yes. But I didn't win. So <laughs> you you weren't Evo champion, so you're not taking Smash seriously? I'm fucking casual. Yes. I'm a fucking casual. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, I guess I I don't know what I guess I don't know what seriously for me would mean. I feel like if I was actually hmm. taking Smash seriously, it would be my life, because that's to me that's what taking something seriously is. Hmm. Yeah, I I feel like now that I've been playing fighting games for a couple of years, like more seriously, I have a specific thing in mind with it, like that defines the category of like taking it seriously, which is just like lapping stuff, right? It's going mm -hmm. in and just like 
dialing in like combos and getting into muscle memory and doing it like specifically you know i guess it depends on the, the game right of like what the the training dojo or you know similar thing looks like um but they're universally like not super fun right and so it's instead mm-hmm. of like i'm just gonna play a lot of this game um and get better that way to intentionally looking at like i know here are some things that if i can dial them in are fairly optimal um as far as like you know actions and decisions that i can take um, and then actually like practicing like those things. So instead of just like playing the game a lot, you're optimizing to play to win. So for me, that's like what that means. Even if you're bad at it, you know, like e- yeah. even when I was first getting into Guilty Gear or something and I was looking at like all of like Kai's combos, right? And, and I was terrible at the game, um, but just playing it like that, like hopping between like YouTube and the training dojo and like back and forth, um, that was like playing it seriously, even though I was a lousy player. Like playing with specifically the intent to get better. Yeah. And not just like get better yeah. in a general sense, but to get better in ways that would have like the most potential, right? So to, to not just like mm-hmm. get better, but to uh, to try to play as optimally as you can. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think the reason it's hard for me to say it, I'm serious about Smash is because it's so much different than other fighting games like so many people can pick up smash and just play it and feel like they have a chance whereas like if you pick up street fighter against someone like you're just gonna get fucking rolled i don't know it's it's just a it's a different experience for me but i also think that there's like i mean assuming items are off and like assuming you're up against someone like if i play if i play against like you know even someone who's like, oh, I play games, but I don't play, like, I mean, okay, just as as a random touchstone, I think we can all understand, right? If I were to play against Jeff Gersman from Giant Bomb, who plays a lot of video games, but does not play Smash, I would fucking annihilate him. Yeah, but I, I feel like it feels somehow more fair, just because you don't have to be, like, memorizing all these combos and stuff. But I have. Yeah. I mean, like, I can do combos with Cloud. I can I can do sequences of four or five moves. I'm, I'm not saying it is anything. fair, but I'm saying it feels more fair. So somehow it's, hmm. like, harder for me to take Smash seriously because it doesn't have, like... It has, like, a way lower barrier of entry than, like, Guilty Gear or Street Fighter. I, I think, like, another thing that hasn't been brought up um, but is super relevant to this discussion is the huge variety in, um, like... Uh, basically like player characteristics or like character characters characteristics excuse me so like the fact that you have like hurt boxes that vary in size so much you have weights that vary in size so much and then like things like weapon reach and all these things right um i think there's a lot more to of information to like master not just like to be acquainted with but to like have dialed in like in a way that like meshes with that muscle memory right so like knowing not just like kill percentages but like at what point and this is so like for me to break it down really like um minimally like kirby with the infamous like up tilt um when grounded right the the kind of sweeping uh juggle kick like for me knowing how many times i can do that on someone at what percentages which varies hugely across characters by weight like so at what point i go like tap 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 for three and then i have to do something else because the person is going to be able to tech out of a fourth one um like I have to memorize a lot more information than in your average, like a Street Fighter game, something like that, where the characters don't vary in size all that much. Like there are differences, but it's kind of a different scale in my humble opinion. It's just, it's balanced in a very lopsided way sometimes, but that's kind of what makes it interesting. Well, I guess that brings us to Smash Ultimate, which feels like the game they've made the most concerted effort to balance so far. And, and maybe made with the most mind towards competitive play. I would say so, yeah. Um, so, like, first off, just, like, um, just, you know, we have a, so I have a general conversation going, but, like, what, what are you looking for in, in a Smash character? Like, what are your, what are your mains and what it is about the game and play styles that appeal to you specifically? I feel like I haven't really found a main in this game yet. I feel like hmm. the most important thing for me is liking the the character. If I don't mm-hmm. like the character, then I'm probably not going to play it, even if I'm good at it. I always feel good playing Mario, but I hate playing Mario. 
Um, so Dr. Mario then. I don't, there you I go. don't like Dr. Mario either. <laughs> I, I like Luigi too. Like I like his moveset, but I don't really like playing him as much. My main right now is the Mii Sword Fighter with uh, some of those movesets. I feel like that's too long to explain, but the Mii Sword Fighter is amazing because you can just like slot in every good sword uh, from all the other sword guys and make like the best sword guy ever. Mm-hmm. Um... It's also, Daisy. Game. Daisy rules. Daisy is amazing. I love Daisy. But I, I wouldn't play the Mia Sword Fighter if I couldn't dress him up like K.K. Slider. So. Sure, but. that's fair. Uh, still, still kind of searching for like the gameplay side of it that ties everything together for you. Then, yeah, I like I like Sword guys. I like Toon Link and Roy, but they both have their downsides. Mm-hmm. So. so. This might sound funny, given, like, some of the stuff I've said um, in this episode up to this point, but if the game gives me the opportunity to play a small amorphous blob character, I'm going to play that character regardless of its of its kit of anything, right? So for me, that mean, hmm. it means I main Meta Knight and Kirby. Um, I sort of dropped Meta Knight um, when Ultimate came out, because for some reason, I think maybe because I was playing um, through the World of Light, I just got... I felt like I had a better sense of Kirby. Like, I, I learned the differences um, from 4 to Ultimate. Like, I got acquainted with Ultimate with Kirby. Um, mm. But I've been now getting kind of back to Meta Knight for the reason, like, the same reason I ended up settling on Meta Knight before. Um, and for me, because I play those characters, because their aesthetics appeal to me, um, it's really, it's like, okay, I have to get in, I have to make their kit work for me. It's not gameplay first. Like, when it, when it came to, like, Guilty Gear, I literally chose my character on the basis of, like, a JavaScript, like, 40-question quiz of, like, what do you want a character to be able to do? And I ended up with, like, Kai, right? Um, and mm-hmm. that was great. Um, so that, where the game didn't present a character that I just had to play, I can pick very rationally. But in this, you give me Kirby or Meta Knight, that's going to be my main. Um, and so I just, mm-hmm. I make it work. Yeah, that's one of the things about Smash is because these are characters that we all have such associations with. It has an ability to kind of, like, push you towards characters based on sentiment and and affection more than Kit in some occasions. And being able to balance within that, I think, is a really special thing, right? Um, Mm -hmm. Because the awful, you know, thing would be if you present a roster that's going to give, like, you know, many players, like, the opportunities to play that character, but then that that character is trash, right? Um, That's pretty brutal. So one of my hopes is that they stay really on top of this. And like you were saying, how it looks to be, you know, competitively oriented. I hope it stays that way. Because, um, mm-hmm. yeah, it feels real bad when the character that you just, you know, have to play just sucks yeah. and just gets bodied. Yeah, I, that's that's definitely been like, honestly, that's been Kirby's fate in a lot of these games. So, um, well, they were super I, OP in 64, right? So I went from that and true. they were sort of trash in uh in four um but it was like ah okay so yeah but Mm -hmm. in all like subsequent things and i like i'm still struggling to play kirby um it i don't know like it i play kirby because i want to play kirby but in almost every instance it does feel like mennonite is just has like better answers for the stuff i need in most Mm matchups you know yeah for me it's like i didn't go into this with any i mean like i've been playing like back I feel like, like specifically, sixty four and melee broke me of picking a character I I liked for sentimental value, because I played those games for long enough, and I played them like relatively like like I don't know if competitively I feel like using competitive, but like I had enough of a rival, right? Where it was like I need to do something that works, and it sort of broke me of attachment to the characters as the characters and more to kits, um, and so for me, like I'm not a huge Final Fantasy fan at all, but I just love Cloud's kit. I find myself really attached to characters in basically every fighting game who have a game within the game. Yeah, I see um, that. So, <laughs> thinking thinking so, back to all the uh, times I've played with... Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> it adds yeah. I like, I like characters who have, like, subsystems who make it so that they aren't just playing the fighting game, they also have their own little side game that they're playing as well. And so with Cloud, that's like playing with a limit break... Um, I play some Robin because you get to do stuff with like, uh, you know, like charging up and using different abilities and like use like conserving your resources because you can run out. Um, I played Sma- uh, Snake in Brawl and I'm not liking him as much here. 
because they replaced his down smash, which was like a, a like a landmine. So he had two different traps, and now he just has the one. And I feel like it really changes him, um, in a way that's lame. But um, yeah, that's that's kind of what appeals to me. And I like that Smash is a game that, as you mentioned before, is so is so versatile that it can support all these really wildly different play styles. Absolutely. So I guess just just covering the bases here of like, well, first off, um, if someone were looking at Smash Ultimate and being like, should I pick this up? Um, let's take a person who's not going to play very much multiplayer. Do you think this game is worth it on the merits of a single player experience? Mm, you're going to play like single player online? I was thinking like World of Light and Spirit Board uh, and Classic Mode and stuff. Maybe if you, I don't, I don't think so. Not for the price. I don't know. I, I mean, it, it really is about like the online and multiplayer experience at this point. I feel like the spirit board's fun to do when you're just like hanging out, watching a movie at home. But I don't feel like it's really like a a meaningful gameplay experience. Yeah, it's like, would you recommend baseball to someone who's only ever going to go to a batting cage? Like, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, it, it just doesn't. Um, I mean, I again, like, when we'll probably get to this, I have zero expectations of any single-player experience, campaign, story, whatever, in any fighting game, because it's not, for me, like, what it's about. Um, but it's hard. I mean, no, I, I don't think this is somehow the, the first fighting game to have, like, a compelling, like, story run or whatever. Sure, and as far as as far as that angle, I agree with you. But I mean, like, there are people like there are people I've talked to who are like, "Yeah, I love Tekken Seven, and you're like, "Oh, you really like the multiplayer?" And they're like, "Oh no, I've never played the multiplayer in my life. I bought it for the story mode." I don't think this is one of those games, though. That this that it barely has a story mode. Yeah, we you you really have to take in, like into consideration that you know with having this like huge ensemble roster, like I I mean this hopefully isn't like a hot take, but. The characters don't feel like they are, like, that they meaningfully exist in the same universe, right? Like, it's not really trying to be anything other than this, like, wild ensemble fighter, right? Um, so when you have these characters that are just plucked from elsewhere, like, they don't really have any sense of, like, coherence, and they don't interact meaningfully. There's no world that's established for us to care about at all. I mean, the whole thing's super meta to the point where, like, the traditional end boss of the series is like what the child's hand whose imagination animates the, you know, the little figurine dolls, whatever. Um, but who is also still a reference to a, a Super Nintendo Kirby game. Damn. Okay, yeah. 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 No, so like. <laughs> right, right. Um, Damn. Yeah. No, but you know, so it's like. Um, so yeah, like, because I do kind of enjoy. Like, as, like, a sideshow, you know, the, like, the, you know, kind of silly uh, stories in some fighting games, especially when I'm just learning them. Like, I enjoy learning them through the stories. Um, Smash doesn't feel, for me anyway, it doesn't feel like it has even that sense of, like, a consistent, persistent, like, coherent, like, Man. narrative universe. I wish that Smash had, like, a story mode, like, Dead or Alive. That would be my dream. Or do you or do you want like a uh, brawl style like the subspace emissary where it's like I mean the story is whatever but you still get to see like Falco meeting Pikachu and being like what the fuck? That's more what I would like. Yeah, honestly. I wish they would just like make really weird character model like movie scenarios and I would be happy with that. <laughs> that would be that would be fun. I feel like there's yeah there's there's potential like one of the things about crossovers that i find really fun like i um gosh it was last year we're in a new year i was gonna say earlier this okay. year um i played a uh, blaze blue cross tag battle and one of the things that i will recommend about that game don't buy it for this but the story mode is actually really fun because the way they handle crossovers is just so ridiculous yeah. where it's like you know like to, like the the vampire meets the dude who's obsessed with blood and they're both just like arguing about like what way is better to experience blood and it's just ridiculous and stupid mm -hmm. yeah um and it feels like there's a lot of potential for that kind of thing in crossovers where like i mean come on why don't we have like link and marth like showing off each other's sword moves or you know like that's my dream palutina like dissecting fox's blaster i mean like there's you know i mean even the uh 
even the Neo Geo Pocket Color versions of uh, SNK versus Capcom, um, which the st- quote unquote story mode was just like some lightly animated sprites um, and like cutscenes, you know, again, air quotes. Um, even that sort of had like the self referential, like dunking on like the characters that exist in the corresponding universes as like parodies, like, oh, this is the S- SNK's like parody of like a Capcom, uh, like, you know, protagonist, right? Like the fact that. Mm those people were now in the same game as like the people they were parroting was like made its own thing. So like, yeah, I mean, it doesn't take much. I feel like there's a rich tradition of that. Um, I mean, granted those are, you know, I think most of the other examples are going to be um, like collaborative ventures within like fighting game universes, not something as disparate as like, you know, I don't know, Kirby, Samus and Ryu, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if, and you know, like certain, certainly that that makes it weird like how does anyone interact with mr game and watch what does that look like um the father but that also makes that's also kind of the fun right is how ridiculous that premise is right like i mean but not addressing that at all i think really undermines like the potential for any like interesting interactions or really like narrative at all right because like the people aren't mm -hmm. they're not real like if you just if you're captain falcon and you see the pikachu you're like what the hell is this thing and if you don't have that reaction, well, then you're really probably not Captain Falco from the Star Fox universe because that universe does not have little Pikachu's, right? Um, mm-hmm. And so it just completely yeah. like signals to the character that these are well animated and nicely balanced cardboard cutouts of the characters, right? Um, that's what you're mm-hmm. telling the player by just ignoring um, like any like motivations or reactions or anything like that. So, mm-hmm. which again is fine, but it makes for a really lackluster. Um, setting for a single play any, any kind of like narrative development and the few instances where they actually dip into it where are like like there's um pit has like the palutina's guidance conversations and then in previous games they didn't bring them back snake had the codec calls and those were like some really beloved content where like you know snakes like what the fuck is this yellow mouse what's happening um and that was really like really fun good content that added to the atmosphere of of ridiculousness around the games i feel like since the roster is so huge they couldn't really do that kind of stuff as much i don't know i feel like other parts of the game suffered just because the i i I really can't imagine having a roster that huge it's just like a lot of work i think maybe it is a lot you should have had like more time or bigger team or more money or all of the above yeah i don't want to get into like the conspiracy theory of like um okay so and this was happening pre-launch too but um the game sort of positioned itself as this weird sort of like playable archive right so between like the um the extent of the music library right it's this catalog of video game history and music right that and then the way they're handling the spirits is being these just like hey here's this thing from the 80s that you probably didn't know about or whatever um to like the conspiracy theory or whatever would be that they didn't really know how like what kind of content they wanted to do they didn't really have a lot of direction so they were just like uh, okay well we'll just like make all these like references you know, include all this stuff from other franchises, other games, just throw the content in, like literally in like 2D form, right? Of like the spirits or whatever. Um, and just like make right. that the thing. Um, Cause that saves you, you don't have to really, you know, you don't have to voice act it. You don't barely have to animate it stuff like that. Um, it could have been that this kind of like archival bent um, was pursued for its own merits. Um, who knows? But yeah, it's, it's something that, to me feels kind of like a replacement for this other possibility that we're talking about something they've done in the past but that is much more intensive so moving the the spotlight back to like how ultimate plays um we've all played four and ultimate um and how do you how do you generally feel about the changes made to the game in ultimate ultimate feels like faster in some ways, but also just like I don't know how to explain it exactly. Cause now I don't even remember what Brawl plays like. Hmm. Um, what about just between four and ultimate, though? Yeah. Hmm? What about just between four and ultimate? Oh, four, right? <laughs> um. For some reason, I thought there. Wow, I was merging the Wii and Wii U in my head, just like everyone else in the world. Anyway, um, I don't know. 
there's some things about four that I like, especially like the responsiveness that I kind of miss. Like mm-hmm. this game feels a lot less responsive than I remember. It doesn't. I mean, that's that's just true. There is there's higher input latency on this game. Um, it just doesn't feel as twitchy, but it also feels fine. I don't know. I don't really know how I feel about it. I don't really have strong feelings either way. Hmm. So, certain things... How do I say? So yeah, input latency has been an issue, as well as um, something that... And, I don't know, maybe I'll get flamed for this because it's not a real thing and I'm just a scrub or whatever. Um, But multiple people, like, so playing online, in person, so it's not just me, um, a lot of people have experienced issues in my circles with um, slight bugs relating to edge grabs. Um, it just seems to be like slightly off, like your character will just coast on by. Um, you know, granted, we haven't like documented it and whatever, but that that's like one thing that it feels like there was a mechanical change there, but I'm not, no one seems to be sure what it was. Um, other, just, we All we know is that like sometimes we just randomly pull into our deaths. Um, it, we feel like we shouldn't have. But that aside... Even though I play Kirby and Meta Knight, I am still fine with um, giving everyone the uh, three frame like jump, you know, squat animation, um, things like that. Um, I really appreciate the, um, I don't know, uh, the changes to air dodging, whatever we're calling that. Um, I think that's a major deal. Um, Mm -hmm. Overall, I like pretty much all of the mechanical changes. at least the the ones that I'm aware of. I think my favorite change personally is just the like the one v one change, um, which you know again I'm seeing as I'm I'm going deep on stuff for folks who aren't aware. Um, when you do one v one smash, it multiplies damage and knockback on all moves by one point two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So everything hits slightly harder just to make one v one move games go move a little bit quicker have a little more impact and i think it really works yeah um, i mean i think i think 1v1s feel great it, so it has that effect but it also breaks up combos right um so that mm-hmm. i think is really interesting and i think for me like i know what that looks like around our couch right clear people playing at our level um i haven't watched a whole lot of competitive ultimate to see how that ultimately affects like the pace um of more competitive matches um my gut would be that it actually like elongates them slightly um just because like i don't know ultimately even if you're doing more damage on hit um you're still not able to like get into you know combos for as long and your you know kill percentage is ultimately going to be higher because you can't combo any kills um and it's true but what i've seen is that you also have a lot more like there are more just like sudden deaths right like there are a lot more instances of like oh he got the hit and they're just gone um because again it's 1.2 times the knockback as well and that means like there's a lots of situations where it'd be like oh you'd knock them high and they'd come back down they don't come back down right yeah um so i've seen some i feel like i've seen some pretty well-paced matches then again i've mostly been watching grand finals yeah. uh at which point people are pretty fucking good yeah. yeah i i really like it as a change because for me it slows down um the initial like it makes the initial like um i i, I almost said neutral <laughs> horrible um the if you make a mistake or you miss a read in the beginning of the game like being able to, like I was saying, you know, in this case, like with the Kirby up tilts, like a person is going to be able to get out of that just up, up, up one earlier, right? So, mm-hmm. but then once the game has progressed, the dramatic tension is built. Um, once the stakes are higher, it kills quicker. Um, so for me, it kind of just like shifts the arc um, and the pacing of that in a way that I like. Because um, I think it can be frustrating, especially for like new players. And then as like, you know, more experienced casual players who are trying to play competitively um it it really bums you out when you like miss a read or you get read at like 15 percent and you die yeah. um and so at least like getting a chance to like air dodge out of something um that you wouldn't have been able to before and like get a, a you know one more chance on that stock makes a big difference yeah for sure um the one other change i want to talk about sort of specifically 
is one I'm kind of torn on. And it's you can turn it on or off. So, you know, like, either way, it's fine. But I thought, I felt like heading into this game, I was like, thank God, they're adding meters for final smashes. Finally, it's gonna I'm going to play this game like a normal fighting game where I'll do combos into super, and it's going to be a resource that I spend, and it's going to be great. And I don't know that I like it. It's not great. Uh, yeah, I feel like I don't have any sort of... Once again, I have, like, no strong feelings about it. <laughs> hmm. Like, every time... I, I, when we don't play with it, I forget about it, and then when we do play with it, it annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like that sounds like you have some feelings. But it's, it's mostly just I forgot about it until it's there. And then it's hmm. annoying. Today, for the record, um, we were playing when some of our friends were here. Um, we finally turned meter off on all of our game modes. We were just like, enough is enough. Like, none of us actually want to play with this. Um, mm-hmm. Six, I my history with that is exactly mirrors yours. I was excited. I wanted what I thought was going to, you know, happen. You know, I how I thought meters and supers were going to work. And it's just not that. And it's fine. Like... Um, you can turn them off, and they're going to be off in tournament play. So, yeah, mm-hmm. stay with me. Yeah, for sure. I wish they were balanced better. Can I say that though? Not to yeah, not to like, quickly I mean, touch it... about that, but of course. But yeah, no, they're just like um, it's extremely frustrating um, to have some be just like objectively better than others, like you know, easier to land, whatever, um, do significantly more damage than others. Um, I'm not quite sure how, like, meter, like, generation goes, so it may be that, you know, the folks who have stronger uh, supers, final smashes, whatever, um, it does, in fact, take them longer, but it doesn't really seem like that's the case when we play with them. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just deeply frustrating, um, because some are an almost guaranteed kill. Um, I've I've Mm -hmm. literally been killed, like, from 0%, more or less, um, by some, and then others just seem to you know, be too difficult to ever get off or to not have, you know, the effect that you'd expect them to. And so, like, if you're going to have them on, I feel like you really have to, they have to tighten that up. That's, like, the sloppiest balance point for me in the, in the game right now. Yeah, I feel like one of the things that makes makes them is uh, a, a, a bad addition in the way they are is, like, for some of them this is not the case, but for some of them it's, like, it doesn't matter if you read it, right? Yeah. Like, if if Richter is going to do the thing where he shuts you in a coffin and throws you into the moon and then shoots you with 7,000 crosses, it's like, you can't dodge that, you can't block that. If he's near you, you're done. It doesn't really matter if you know exactly what he's going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, versus, like, Cloud's Omni Slash, it's like, no, you can just jump over that, or you can block that. And it's like, that doesn't feel... Like, that, that feels okay to me. It still doesn't feel great, but it's like, okay, you have defensive options. Mm-hmm. You don't have defensive options against a lot of these. It's just sort of like, okay, well, they have their final smash. You are going to die now. Your actions do not matter. Yeah. Also, like, within, like, you know, individual final smashes, the options the characters have are not uniform. So as a, you know, as a part-time Kirby player, I know well that um, when Snake, you know, pops his meter, I can just downbeat and I can just chill. Um, and I don't get knocked back, right? Um, and every damn is silly. Um, and that's not, that's not skill. That's nothing. That's just, it just, like, happens to be, like, the way that that's coded. Um, it just, like, doesn't affect me, which is nice and convenient. Um, but that's not, like, balance. And certainly something like, yeah, like, the targeted Bowser smash, which isn't, you know, there's nothing you can do about that. Like, the whole game stops and you get to play the who, whose stock do I want to take minigame. Um, versus, yeah, stuff that you can bait out, stuff that you can actually, like, adjust to. Mm-hmm. Also, it, one thing I find extremely frustrating is that, um, it knocks people out, like, anyone popping a final smash, um, takes people out of their moves and animations, um, which can actually lead mm-hmm. to kills, um, funny enough, right? Because it resets their, like, momentum and stuff like that, so you can have people just, you know, like... For instance, if I'm, you know, in a Kirby downbeat, like rock coming down, someone pops it, and then all of a sudden I'm just floating. Um, maybe not the person who popped the smash, but let's say if we're playing like four player smash, someone could just like up smash me, and there's nothing I can do because I was brought out of the animation. 
um, and out of the thing. Um, and that's really wild. And it seems like something that almost like isn't intentional. Um, but it for me, it's a big deal. I mean, I think for a lot of people, it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel like those are the main points I wanted to hit. Are there any other any other thoughts about uh, Smash Ultimate you wanted to get out there? Um, I really wish they would fix the latency. Hmm. That's pretty much my only like really strong feeling on it. Also, like, why can't I play a fucking me sword fighter for in like tournaments? Well, that's not really on Nintendo. Right? Uh, yeah, not Nintendo, just in general. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I, 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 I mean, suppose it's on Nintendo to the extent that certain kits are IMBA. Um, and so the fact that they have to be banned is not really... That, like, does come back on Nintendo, right? Sure, but I also think... I mean, there's... So, if I can very briefly rant... This is not news to either of you. Um... But, like, so there was that thing that went around when, like, uh, the first, like, like band stages list was announced for Smash Ultimate, right? And basically there were, like, three legal stages. And people were like, what the fuck? What are you guys doing? Like, don't you guys know how to f- have fun? This is ridiculous. And especially in a game like Smash, where there are so many variables, it's not the same approach as a normal fighting game. In a normal fighting game, you say, okay, everything is allowed because we assume they're building this for competitive play, and as problems are discovered, we will turn things off if necessary. In Smash, you have to go the other way, where you say, a lot of this is obviously broken. We have to play it safe and turn a lot of things off and enable them as they're proven to not be a problem. Yeah. And I think that might be the state the state of the Mii fighters, a uh, brawler, sword fighter, gunner. I think... It's just a situation where, like, there are so many variables with them, they might be broken. Right now, we need to do some testing. Fair. Because, like, it's not going to stay at three stages for Smash Pro play. There's going to be a lot more. But right now, it's like, well, like, remember last time when they were like, hey, and there's a Battlefield version of every stage, so every stage is identical. And then you booted them up, and you're like, these Battlefield stages are not all the same. They have different properties on them. You literally lied about them all being the same. So, like, can't trust Nintendo on that shit. Yeah, I mean, I think, though, there is an expectation. So all of that as a, like, as a, I don't know, recovering VGC player, um, that all sounds a lot of, like, smog on to me, right? Um, Mm. So for people who aren't aware, uh, smog on is the, like, uh, community-curated and sort of, like, regulated and organized, uh, like, tiering system for developing brackets in uh, singles uh, Pokemon play. Um, it's not what's used in these tournaments, blah, 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 right? And there's the perennial, like, you know, do people get, you know, shifted up, shifted down? Like, you know, basically what each, each like, tier of play has its own meta, right? Um, and there's endless mm-hmm. discussions on this. Um, and the community, the mods who decide on these things are notoriously very conservative, right? Um, there isn't the expectation, I, I don't think, right, that in this case, like, Game Freak is going to be, you know, reading smog on and, like, making tweaks to, you know, uh, to, you know, different variables uh, to balance the game around this. Um, but I do think that Smash is at a point, one, the type of game that it is, um, and with its reach and stuff like that, I would hope that as the community, as, like, the Smash of GC community, um, has to make certain decisions about like, well, we actually can't green light this because it's broken, um, that um, Nintendo will at least consider implementing some changes based on the community feedback, right? Like, I do think that there has to be some expectation of like, I don't know, like just awareness and like sort of, I don't know, mm-hmm. mutual respect, right? Sure. And I feel like my number, like the number one step they need to make, is they need to make real patch notes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, that's just that's just a necessary. If this, if I mean, I I can see if you still think of this as a parting game, why you wouldn't do that. Though I still don't totally understand. But like, if you have any expectation this game will be played in any kind of competitive sense, a lack of patch notes is just not acceptable. They gave better ones on Splatoon, which just baffles me. Right. That's yeah. saying something. Yeah. But that can we can we say though that uh, as just like a you know not to close on like an ominous note, but um, prior to the release of Ultimate, I think fairly clearly at least for first party games, Splatoon was like the flagship 
online Switch game, right? Um, and mm-hmm. I think maybe people have some doubts looking at how they've handled Splatoon um, and like updates and just like the you know interactions with the community and like facilitating like you know a productive, growing, happy player base, um, right? Um, I really sure. hope they learn from some of the what I would consider mistakes um, that they made with Splatoon Two, um, and I don't know, like recognize that this is going to be a game that a lot of people are playing for a long time um, competitively mm-hmm. on this system, right? It's going to be a flagship game on the Switch for the like for the lifetime of the Switch, um, mm-hmm. and to really like really take it seriously. Um, I don't know. I just I, as someone who's sunk, you know, like. I don't know how many hundred hours into Splatoon, um, but a lot. Um, yeah, I just mm-hmm. I hope that Smash gets the treatment it deserves. And I hope they can like one of the things for a moment I had the hopeful thought of like, well, it was made in cooperation with another developer that'll help them. And then I remember the other developer was Bandai Namco, who's just as bad at that shit as they yeah. are. So, I guess we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I think that's all I, I had ready for us. Um, so we can go ahead and kick it to... Um, I can't call... It. Listeners, you didn't hear me say Plug Zone, because I'm not supposed to say... Mia Drag says he doesn't want me to say it on this podcast. So are we just going to take it to our, our little outro segment here? Um, Ty, Kat, do you have... We we had a little bit of the in the intro here. Is there anything you want to promote um, vis-a-vis the internet or creativity or whatever? Not really, because I'm still in game design school, so I don't have anything on itch right now. But I will. You're just building the anticipation. Yes. People are just people are just like they're they're lining they're they're l- let them know where they can go to stand in line. Cat, uh, at least do that. You can look me up on itch.io. I think my name is just Katniss and Mog, but there's nothing there. But you can follow me, and one day there will be something there, probably in a couple months. Um, Great. Yeah. Otherwise, I have an Instagram that's the same name. And you can follow me there. I got rid of my Twitter. You should too. High five. <laughs> what about you, Ty? Similar deal. Um, I have nothing on the internet because I am revamping everything in advance of uh, completing my manuscript, which does have to be done uh, fairly soon. Um, so for now, follow on Tishiva on Twitter. Um, there, I'm sure there'll be a book around in the next year or two if it takes me that long. God, I hope not. Yeah. And you can also look for both of them in the upcoming Scanline Media Smash Bros. Ultimate 1v1 Tournament. I'm announcing right... No, I, I haven't cleared this with literally anyone. This was just a joke. I want it. Don't make we people do, do it. That, that sounds fun. Don't tease me like that, Sid. <laughs> I, listen, I'm down. I did a... Back in the day, I did a uh, tournament of uh, Third Strike with all my online friends. Hey. Um and I got accused of sandbagging. It was kind oh, of ugly. No. But <laughs> a story for another time. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Kat, Ty, for joining thank me. Thank you for having us. And, and thank you, uh, Miodrog, for taking a little break and uh, no doubt coming back refreshed and eager to talk about even more fighting games. Until next month, folks. We'll see you. Shalom. Bye.